Welcome to Eurobike 2024 edition. I'm in Frankfurt, Germany, in search of the latest bike tech and innovation. Now, as well as searching out the lightest, stiffest, fastest, most aeroist bikes, I'm also going to see what else other brands have to offer. Let's go. So we've swung by the Shimano booth. Understandably, this place is jam-packed with incredible bikes and equipment, but this thing is off the charts. It's the 1R from J Lavrak Cycles. Now, Ollie took a closer look at this bike at Ruler Live a few months ago. Absolutely incredible bike, loads of really cool details all over it. The two things that stand out most to me, the handlebars, we've got this change of material from carbon fiber to 3D printed titanium. It's like a thing of beauty, this bike, but also something which I want to focus on a little bit more are the brake calipers. Now, understandably, we're on the Shimano booth, so this bike is tricked out with Shimano Durace head to toe, apart from the brake calipers. Now, if you take a closer look down here at the calipers, this is like a really incredible design, something that I've not actually seen on any other bike before. So the caliper is actually molded into the section of frame, and it's so incredible to see. We've got exquisite machining and stuff here, so it's now a four-piston caliper. But to get that to work with the Shimano Durace lever, actually takes a lot of design to get right because it's quite a complicated system. Nonetheless, I think it looks incredible and it's perhaps something we're going to see introduced more in the bike industry in the future. First prototype bike of the show is the Giant Trinity prototype. Now, I've just been speaking to one of the guys on the stand about this. It's top secret information. They can't tell me much about it, but the most striking difference I can see, really narrow and deep fork legs, super wide and narrow rear seat stays, the design of this, look at it. The gap between it is crazy. All about trying to in improve airflow and aerodynamics of this bike. One thing that they could tell me about this is that it's been designed from the ground up, like everyone says, but with a disc brake platform in mind because a lot of time trial bikes are really rim brake bikes that have been modified to have the disc brakes incorporated in them. And here they've really thought about the way of how they can incorporate disc brakes into the design to maximize airflow and aerodynamics as much as possible. So far, we've seen this bike spotted at a few select races being used by a few select riders on the Jayco Alula team. And rumor has it that when the bike is finalized, it could change ever so slightly. We might first see it at the Tour Down Under next year. Who knew 2024 was going to be the year that Aero met tires? So we've stopped by the DT Swiss stand and they have fitted to these DT Swiss wheels a set of Continental Aero tires named aero um, you can see here ollie spotted these actually when he was out of the tour de france they've got these crazy little sort of like knacker ducts almost into the tire designed to help improve the aerodynamics the tires that ollie spotted at the tour de france were only fitted onto the front wheels with this design into the into them presumably that's because the front wheel has the most importance when it comes to aerodynamics and by the time the air is at the back of the bike it's been hugely disrupted by the rest of it so you can see the shape and profile of these cutouts is directional and it's important to make sure you have the tire fitted the correct way around. So the airflow has to come across the tire and then catch into this little channel. And the idea is that it then creates some turbulence to help the airflow channel around the profile of the rim to help reduce aerodynamic drag as much as possible. Naturally, I think people would assume you would have the tire fitted the other way around, but I've been told the idea is, is that the wind flow is going this way and catching into these little channels as the wheel is rotating around at high speed, designed to help you go a little bit faster. Picture this, you've punctured your bike, you've changed your inner tube, you put your tire back on. What's the next most frustrating thing? Pumping up your tire. Check out this little device from Topic. It's a rechargeable electric pump. It's designed for road bike tires predominantly, and with the internal battery system and the digital gauge on and off button, once you've set your tire pressure, on a road bike tire, you can choose between a Presto and a Schrader valve, and then the battery is good for three inflations of your road bike tire. Now, it says that it can reach 80 PSI in just 50 seconds. Now, if anyone out there thinks that they can pump their road bike tire up with a little mini pump to 80 PSI in less than 50 seconds, well, let me know in the comments section down below. We're at the classified stand here. Now, the classified two-speed hub is not new technology, but what is new is the collaboration between TRP and classified to make a drivetrain setup which is integrated and works seamlessly together. So now you can have the TRP wireless shifting, which will automatically control the classified hub, something which they're calling quantum shift. It means that you can either have it in full quantum shift mode and as you shift through the gears and up the cassette, 
the system will then automatically shift the classified hub to make sure you're getting full use of all of the gears. Now there is a road setup and a gravel setup which is said to give you either 15 or 16 individual gears and gives you a super wide gear ratio. Now the classified system is pretty simple. The idea is that it means you just have one chainring up front, no need for a front derailleur and it simplifies the front of the bike. You can of course switch the quantum shift on or off. You just have to suppress the lever on the left hand side of the shifter for five seconds and then you've got your normal control of the gears just like everyone's used to pretty neat system and I like it. The UCI would have an absolute heart attack if they saw this bike. It's the Kdex Tri, the bike of Christian Blumenfeld, and it looks absolutely wild. Black and gold, which is one hell of a colour theme. Kdex four spoke wheels, gold SRAM chain, gold cassette, the latest SRAM red, and of course this absolutely striking frame design with the crazy wild fork blades at the front, integrated hydration system, I mean, this is more a bike that's right up GTN Street, but nonetheless, I think it looks crazy. Love it. Bike fit, rider position, and handlebar ergonomics and design. It's something loads of brands are really focused on. One of those brands being Pro, a brand owned by Shimano. This is the new carbon aero handlebar from them. We've got a much deeper, narrower profile on the tops, a new stem design to go with it, narrower size, a 10 degree flare, and also really nice shaping of the handlebar here to have like almost a seamless integration with the Shimano lever hoods. Integrated cables and hoses, naturally of course. And then if we look at the center of the bar, we've got an innovative little design here. So we've got a rubber cover, which lots of brands are using to help smooth the transition from the handlebar to the stem, but hidden underneath the rubber cover is a little satellite shifter. So you've got an additional shifter tucked in underneath here, which is really cool. Remove this rubber cover, you've got additional space to add clip-on aero bars, a neat little feature, something which is difficult to do on a one-piece handlebar and stem. We've got a new stem design here. Sizes are available in a 37, moving all the way up to a 41. And um, yeah, I just, I just really like the look of this handlebar. Something cool to see. Also, new saddle to go with this as well. The Pro Stealth Evo Super Light. So it's got a new one-piece carbon fiber rail and base construction to it, a little bit shorter than the previous version, and I believe it's about 130 grams. Take a look at this absolute weapon of a bike. Now, I'm a sucker for a titanium bike, and we've stopped by the Bulls bike stand here, a brand which I'm not actually really familiar with, but the vast range of bikes they got is incredible. This bike, however, is what really does it for me. So we've got titanium used extensively throughout and a mix of different construction processes here. So these sections here up by the seat clamp, the head tube and the top of the fork are actually cast from titanium. And then the main sections of tubing are hydroformed and then welded together. And that construction process is enabling the different uses of shapes to integrate like the fork really nicely with the head tube, the different shapes on the fork as well. I really like this. We've got some neat little welds down the bottom Polished titanium, do you know what, really does it for me. Um, clearance for big 50 mil chunky gravel bike tires, SRAM force throughout. This is a robust and ready gravel bike. 5,999 euros. Yes, it's a lot of money, but for a complete titanium bike, sounds pretty good to me. Forget 28 mil tires, forget 30 mil tires, forget 32 mil tires, because these are where the future of road bikes lies. This is probably a 400 mil tire. No, I'm just kidding. It's actually a Formula One tire, which is a nod to Pirelli's like history, heritage, and the technology that is going from Formula One all the way to the tires fitted to your road bike. So new tire available from Pirelli. We've got the P0 Race TLR RS, which launched a few weeks back, which is, I think, Pirelli's first tire with FSC certification, which is actually really cool. Um, a nod towards their environmental um, friendly standards. But also this is a new colorway. So this is the P0 Race TLR, not the RS version. And it's available in this new retro tan cream sidewall color. I really like that. And then if we move up slightly, there's also a Cinturato all road tire, which I also really like the look of. It's got like a super slick central section and slight bit of tread on the side. So kind of like really fixing that all road market of like a bit of road riding and a bit of light gravel riding. I'm really keen to try that tire out. Also, it's available with a classic brown sidewall, which does it for me. Now, if by any chance you happen to have watched the Tour de France recently, which I hope everyone has, you would have seen that these glasses half broke the internet. They're from a company called Chicon, and Dylan Gronewagen was spotted wearing them. And um, for me, 
it's a little bit too out there and a little bit too Batman-like, but I think some people will like it. Now, I was actually speaking to Claudio, the co-founder of Chicon, a minute ago, and he said it was incredible the amount of attention this was, has received. So this version here is actually a 3D printed additional piece to go onto the glasses. Now, there's rumors floating around that it's for improving aerodynamics, rumors saying that it's to stop your nose getting sunburnt, but uh, Claudio tells me it was actually designed initially to stop water going in around the nose area of the glasses and fogging it up, something which they initially thought about during the classic season, but apparently Dylan Groenewegen just wanted to use for the Tour de France purely for the hell of it. Eurobike is not just about lightweight, super fast, incredible aerodynamic carbon fiber bikes. There's other more important bikes here too, such as this. It's the Buffalo Bike S2 from World Bicycle Relief. And it's actually an award winner here at Eurobike for 2024 with its innovative two-speed geared system. So let me explain how this works because it's actually a little bit confusing. So we've got two chains, two sprockets and two chain rings, but at any one time, only one of these chains is driving the bike. So it's the simplest way that World Bicycle Relief and the cheapest way they say they could in incorporate a second gear onto the bike. So when you're pedaling normally like this, you've got one of the gears engaged, then you have to stop, back pedal for at least about 180 degrees, and then that's engaging the second gear so you can either go a little bit faster or a little bit slower, depending on what gear, there we go, you previously had engaged. Now this special free wheel design at the back is patented from World Bicycle Relief. And even though the idea behind this is to keep the costs as low as possible, understandably, it does make this bike ever so slightly more expensive. So they are gonna keep the single speed version out there because after all, the whole ethos behind this bike is to get people, get to education, get to school, get to work in developing countries. So keeping that price point low is really important as is making an incredibly robust bike. 3D printing technology is really making big strides in the bike industry. These are hubs produced by Scope, a wheel manufacturer, 3D printed from a material called Scalmaloy. This is how they pretty much come off of this big batch, printed in one big go, 60 hubs on this thing. They're removed from here and then the little supports are removed by hand and you end up with an item like this. These are 3D printed in Germany. And then the finished hubs like that then go across to the Netherlands where they're shot blasted and sand blasted and then machined to get the nice finish and the tolerance for the bearings ready to be installed before having a special PDV coating on which pretty much adds zero weight to this thing. So this is the finished article ready to have the bearings and the internals all put into it. Let me just zero the scales. 32 grams for this, which is kind of mind blowing. And then they build up into some incredible carbon wheels. Stop by the park tools stand and as well as a plethora of incredible tools here, we've got two new things to talk about. Firstly, we've got this, the CT-15. It's a new chain tool here. We've got a revised handle, a new turning mechanism, which is cast, an upgraded thread design there to make it even more precise. Then included in the handle here, we've got two spare pins for the device, as well as the Campagnolo peening tool in here and Park Tools say this is the only chain tool that includes that as standard. There's also a revision and change to the little support here, which is adjustable and just supports the chain a little bit better than the previous version to make sure when you're driving the pin into the chain, you get it as straight as possible. Plus, the finish on the handle. I mean, that looks incredible. Love that. Um, but there's more. Further down, we've got a new bottle opener. Let's check it out next. Now, it feels a bit crazy that I'm about to show you this next thing, seeing as we've got so many incredible tools and bits to help you fix your bike here. But nonetheless, it's new, so we're going to talk about it. And here it is. It's the BO6, uh, the sixth edition of the bottle opener, designed to actually look like the Park Tools pedal spanner. I think it's pretty cool. I like the look of it. And it's also next to the BO3, which is the third generation bottle opener. It's a little mini boy, so it's also got a 10 mil spanner adapter on here. So if by any chance you happen to need to open a bottle and adjust a 10 mil bolt, that thing's got you covered. <laughs> so that is Eurobike day one over. There is so, so, so much cool bike tech and innovation to show you, far more than I've shown you in this one video. So subscribe to GCN Tech, turn on your notifications, because I am gonna make at least two more videos from this bike show, and I don't want you to miss out on a single thing. Let me know in the comments section down below what was your favorite thing from day one, and well, um, see you in a few days time. Bye.